A new Blender Beam add-on release has just been published and compiled by The Unmold. This is an amazing opportunity to go over what happened since the last release. Let's go! Of course, if you want to download this tool, you can find it at blenderbeam.org. It's a free open source tool and one of the best when it comes to IFC native tools. So go ahead, try it out and be amazed, because I promise you are going to be. All right, let's go. Blender Beam Add-on version 0.0.240602, which stands for June the 2nd, 2024. This release has 561 new releases and fixes. Let's go over the most important ones. Drawing improvement. You know I'm not into drawings, but there are still a lot of people using them. So let's go quickly over this. We can see that now it's much simpler to print multiple drawings. Then what else do we have? Default settings are now available in case you delete them from a drawing preset. The underlay cache is now working as intended instead of being ignored. There were many unnecessary operations happening during drawing load saves or property edits. They were mostly wasteful and have been removed now which will make your workflow smoother. Any missing sheets will now be regenerated when needed, just like missing drawings. That's good. And it's now almost three times faster to save models when syncing collections. Acting and switching drawings is now about twice as fast, which is always welcome. So amazing stuff about drawings. Continued work on style and material consolidation. The styles user interface now works in a more similar way to the materials and profiles user interface. All of the panels which used to exist in the Blender B materials tab have now been migrated to the IFC geometry and materials tab, which is pretty cool that we know we can find everything regarding these things in one single tab. It's now nicer to expand and contract materials in bulk in the material manager without losing your position. That's great. Material total now counts a particular class, not all material classes. You can now add a description and a category when creating a new material. You can now add category specific material pieces, such as for concrete or steel, for example. You can now add manual classification references for materials. There is now support for copying material sets and lists and reuse presentation styles. This is great. And by the way, if you want to go through all these details about this release, feel free to go to osarc.org and the forums, you'll find this thread or check the link in the description below so that you'll get there quicker. Quantity takeoff completely redesigned with IFC OpenShell based calculations. This is great. I'm really excited for this because this is something that I really use and I could use even more. The quantity takeoff procedure has been redesigned. Previously, there were multiple quantity takeoff utilities that were spread around the interface and all used different quantification methods. These have now been consolidated into the IFC 5D tool and can be run agnostic of Blender. This is critical for those who run automated server model processing. Okay, like I said, this is amazing stuff. I can't wait to play more with this. When doing quantity takeoff, it is now possible to choose between different calculation engines. Each calculation engine offers different capabilities with pros and cons with respect to speed, accuracy and capability. Users can also use custom queries to filter the type of object and map quantity requirements to calculator functions. This is great. This also means that automated quantity takeoffs can be done for quantities that are not part of the quantity takeoff base quantity standard. Oh, this is great actually, yeah, because yeah, if you were limited to just the base quantity standard, then this is going to make a huge difference, such as in IFC 2 x 3 or if you have custom quantity takeoff requirements, which sometimes unfortunately happens, but it is what it is. Power users can code their own calculation engine. The old guess quantity feature has been deprecated. Quantification panel interfaces have been redesigned and are now all in the costing and scheduling tab. It should now be easier to use. All of the remaining panels in the end toolbox have already been relocated into their relevant areas in the IFC tabs. There should now be almost no custom panel interface outside this area. The Blender calculation engines flooring height and ceiling height are now more accurate. This is great. I really love that these tools are not spreaded across different places in the Blender Beam interface now or Blender interface. And now we can find everything in here in this tab in costing and scheduling. Amazing stuff. And by the way, I need to give a shout out to Stefano Verugi, who I think has contributed with some feedback with regards to these features right here, since he is working as a quantity surveyor and he's using these tools. Packaging improvements. This is stuff about the versions and PyPy now consistently releases between 
Python 3.9 and 3.12, we now also ship the correct Python versions for Mac OS. The BSDD library, IFC patch, IFC CSV and IFC clash is now distributed on PyPy. Wow, that's great. IFC OpenShell and IFC testers PyPy dependencies have been fixed. Packaging has been cleaned up somewhat for the Blender B Madden with version locks removed for a lot of dependencies and versions bumped and fetched using pip. We also now ship a Python 3.12 variant of the Blender B Madden. Okay, this is new, I did not know that, so I'll try it out and see if it works with the latest Blender version. This is actually a very, very important one. Improved error reporting. Doesn't matter what you do, this is a huge way you can contribute to this amazing project, just by reporting the issues that you are finding. This is amazingly helpful. I understand if you cannot coding, if you cannot afford to donate, but if you would really like to contribute to this project, this is the best way you can do it. Just report the issues that you are finding or suggest some things that you would like to see in this tool. All IFC operations now have improved error reporting. When an error occurs, the system will let you know and show that your file is potentially in an unstable state. You can continue to work with your file, but it is generally not recommended. It also stores the last 10 actions you performed, as well as a journal of detailed logs that occurred during those actions. It will direct you to an aligned troubleshooting page, which includes how to ask for help, how to debug it further, and how to copy paste the debug logs when filling a bug report. This will make sure that developers will get all the information they need. Ideally, sometimes they will need your model to fix the issues. Yeah, this is great. I'll make a separate video where I'll cover this specific topic in more depth and I'll show you how you can actually use these features. If an error occurs during installation, it's smart enough to show your Python version, Blender version and platform. It will figure out the correct installation link for you to reinstall. Some users get confused between too many versions we have available. Yeah, IFC OpenShell API design upgrades. I will not go too deep into this, but yeah, let's mention the most obvious things. This is mostly for developers, but is significant enough to highlight in these release notes. The API previously functioned one element, one at a time. The API now supports batch commands, so this means that there will be an overall small speed up everywhere. For those who are writing scripts that manipulate IFCs, this can be the difference between a script taking hours and a script taking seconds. Wow, that's huge actually. I'll go forward, I'll skip this because I think this is more advanced and if you are interested in this kind of stuff, you can read more in the page or most probably you don't even need to watch this video because yeah, you are able to use more advanced things regarding Blender Beam and IFC OpenShell. Custom properties. Okay, this sounds like a strange one, but we now support adding arbitrary custom properties and quantities without the need to first create a property set template. Okay, this was not possible before, right? You needed to create the property set template and then to create the properties that you wanted. This is not a good practice. Dian makes this very clear. Data types are auto-detected, but still convenient when you want to quickly throw in some data or for educational purposes. We still highly recommend everybody to use templates. Yeah, templates are the best way. Now, this one is really, really, really important. Google Summer of Code 2024. This will be the fourth year that IFC OpenShell and Blender B Madden will be participating in the Google Summer School of Code program. This year, we have three students with winning proposals. Please welcome Kshiti Rudki, who will be working on an IFC tester web interface to author IDSs with VUCA's page. Do you understand what this means? It means that we are going to be able to use IFC OpenShell and Blender in a web user interface to actually create IDSs. This is amazing news, guys. I hope you are as excited as I am. Please also welcome Chirag Singh, who will be working on integrating IFC data with Radiance Light Simulation. I don't work much with light, but this is important stuff as well. Please also welcome Ziad Ibrahim, who will be working on building a web-based UI that can be run alongside the Blender interface for things like scheduling, Gantt charts, and BCF issues management. This is crazy good. Like, I can't wait to see this. This is going to be huge, guys. Come on, scheduling, Gantt charts, and BCF issue management alongside the Blender interface? Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. Coding has just begun, so expect interesting things happening in the coming updates. Okay, so I think they just started, and I think we're going to see hugely interesting things by the end of this year, so stay tuned for that. All right, the next one is iNest 
Innovation Grant. Development isn't just coding, of course. One significant event is that the Bladder B. Madden and of ISO Purcell will be part of a research program founded by Italian consortium INES, Interconnected Northeast Innovation Ecosystem, featuring the participation of Italian companies Cadline Software SRL, 888 Software Products SRL, Three Phase Engineering SRL, Donadello and Partners STP SRL. This will likely help with project funding and may result in some interesting future features. I can't wait to see what this will end up being actually. This sounds very, very exciting. Oh guys, and this is the best thing of this release. We are hiring again. Thanks to all of our financial donors, the time is right to hire another part-time developer to join the party. If you know C++ and Python and are passionate about open source software, please see the job advertisement and get in touch. I think this is published on blenderartists.org. You will see all the details in here. I'll also leave a link in the description below. And maybe not only that, I think I'm going to make a full video only about this because I think this is important. And yeah, I want to spread the word as much as possible to get more people in here. Can you imagine, guys, this is amazing news because we got so much progress in the last year. And with another part-time developer, this is going to go to completely new heights. I'm very, very excited and pumped by this. ISC 5D improvements. Many thanks to those testing and using cost-related features. I was among one of them, but I did not provide so much feedback, I think, but I tested a little bit. But again, Stefano Verugi is one of them, who I think has uh, used this a lot and provided a lot of uh, posts on, on the OSR forum and maybe chat. We now distinguish between a quantity of zero, this is definitely coming from him, I remember reading this in a post, of zero versus a null quantity, which implies that the cost value is the total cost. There are now restrictions to prevent mixing quantity types per cost item, improved user experience when assigning cost items to product types, improved user interface to indicate that exporting cost schedule expects a directory, fix bug when removing cost schedule column, disable adding cost schedule column without a name, different cost schedule can have different custom columns, fix bug exporting a schedule of rates when a cost item has no quantities but control objects with quantities. ISC 2 x 3 improvement. Okay guys, you know that I'm not so keen on ISC 2 x 3 but at the same time, most of the projects, even in Norway, are still delivered mostly in ISC 2 x 3 So I'm very happy to see anything that gets improved regarding this as well. And I see a lot of bugs here and I'm very pumped for that because I think some of this might be some results on my requests because I remember trying to do some different things with some of my models and I did not manage to do because there were some bugs. I don't know. Again, I don't want to brag about this. I just hope that my feedback was useful in some way. Assigning nested objects now works in IC 2 x 3 Yeah, because this was not working before. If you had an object that was nested in another one, it was not possible to assign a class, an IFC entity. Fix bug in IFC 2 x 3 where sheet has no description. Fix invalid shapes in IFC 2 x 3 where profile have non-optional position and need 2D coordinate. Auto create a default user and organization is not specified in IFC 2 x 3 Fix bug where some of IFC 2 x 3 files would fail to link. Fix bug when trying to trace outlines for a new representation in IFC 2 x 3. Fix bug where removing document information didn't work on IFC 2 x 3. Fix bug where appending material asset didn't work in IFC 2 x 3. Fix bug to remove inventories of people in IFC 2 x 3. Removing copying materials now handles IFC 2 x 3 properties. That's good. Removing library references now supports IFC 2 x 3. Okay, that's great. And this is actually the last one, which had a separate section. And now we have so many other things. And I will not go through this because I will need some time. Look here, guys, there's so much happening. So please go to the link in the description below or to OSR forums and this specific thread and read all these details if you are interested in. But again, there have been fixed a lot of bugs and a lot of new features have been released and features have been improved. So. This is amazing. I'm so pumped. Thank you very much everyone for all the contribution. Doesn't matter what you are doing. We can see here uh, credits to this release in order of the commits. We can see Andre, which is the full-time Blender Beam developer or IFC OpenShell developer. And Dion Molt, of course, the creator of this add-on, amazing add-on. And Ryan Schultz has also contributed here. Massimo Bruno, Perigao and Postel, and Thomas also something. And yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous again and so on. Vukas, just few commits, but still very important. Thank you everyone very much for all the contribution. Oh, oh, what's happening here? Donors since the last release. Beam voice. 
Why is Beam Voice here, guys? Do you know why? Yes, because Beam Voice pays it forward. That's what Beam Voice does. Like, thank you to everyone, all the instructors and everyone who has participated. I think I'll need to make a separate video about this because I really need to share with you this story, guys. Like, if you don't know, in the last, I think since September until now, Beam Voice, together with everyone else, of course, I did it, but because you guys helped me, you were part of this, you as instructors and participants to the courses and the workshops that we had. So we donated close to $5,000 in total. Wow. Yeah, that's part of the reason why we are managing to hire a new part-time developer right now. I'm very, very happy for that. It's not the only reason, of course, there are many other people keep donating, but yeah, we are doing our share and stay tuned for what is to come in June because we plan to contribute even more. Yes. Also read the description below because I just launched another Blender Beam workshop for beginners. So if you are struggling and postponing to learn how to use Blender Beam to validate your IFC models, to understand better IFC schema or to create and run your first IDS, then this is the right thing for you, my friends. Yeah. So again, thank you very much. Again, especially to the You don't understand, guys. I'm sure you cannot see what's happening behind the scenes, but you need to understand this. Dion Malt is the hero of OpenBeam for the built environment. You have no idea how big his contribution is every day. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, Dion, for all the sacrifices you are doing. Yes, he is making a lot of sacrifices to do everything. Even if for him is just a passion, he is making a lot of sacrifices. And I really, really appreciate you for everything you are doing. If you are using this tool or if you want to make an impact in this industry, there is a way you can help. And the first thing you could start with is by liking this video and maybe leaving a comment. After that, maybe you'd like to watch another useful video right here.